Hey everybody, welcome to my video on indifference curves, budget constraints, and demand. I'm going into this video assuming you already know about indifference curves and budget constraints, and I'm going to use this video to show you one of the big reasons we care about these, which is to explain where a demand curve comes from. Presumably you already know what these things mean. If not, go watch my video called Where Do Indifference Curves Come From, which should have a little link up in the corner right now. And you're aware that this point, this red blob here, represents the optimal bundle of X and Y at the given prices that give us this budget constraint. So we bake a price in, we say, hey, that's price one. With price one, here's the quantity X1 that we want to purchase. If this price changes, this budget constraint changes, and so on. Okay, so two graphs, same idea. This is measuring the pair of goods I want to buy. This is measuring the price and one of the goods I want to buy. Then we lower our price. Well, if we lower the price of good X, the quantity of good Y that we can purchase, if we buy all Y, won't change. But for each Y we give up, we can gain additional X's above what we used to. And so our budget constraint pivots out along the X axis, which you'll now notice this original indifference curve is no longer going to lead to an optimal outcome because there's no point of tangency. Instead, because our budget constraint got relaxed a little bit, we can reach some higher level of utility. That higher level of utility is associated with a higher consumption of good X. And I'll be honest with you, I could have drawn this differently. I could have made good X, I could have made good Y increase its quantity. I could have made good Y decrease its quantity. I can do all kinds of stuff depending on if I want substitutes or complements. Uh, I tried to keep it fairly level just to not distract us from that. But in any case, the price of good X falls, the quantity of good X rises. And so we plot that on this graph. And then just for illustrations, let's lower the price of good X one more time. There's a third budget constraint for X. With this third budget constraint, I can reach a higher level of utility again. I see three is higher up the mountain of utility than two or one, leading to this new bundle with a higher amount of good X in it. I can plot the new price, the lowest price so far, and the new X, the highest X so far, and I get this. And we start to see that if we trace through these, we get something that looks like a demand curve. It links quantities and prices, it's downward sloping. Now again, if I'd wanted to, I could have shaped these indifference curves to accommodate for substitutes and complements. I can shape the indifference curves to account for normal and inferior goods. The way we shape these does all that stuff that we always talk about in a principles class. This video is just to show you the general idea though. If you lower the price of the good, you're gonna, people will choose to buy more of it. I know it's a really short video, but hopefully the illustration is helpful to you. If not, too bad. Good luck, econing guys. Like seriously, good luck, have fun, whatever. See you next time. Thanks for watching.